Please welcome Atlantic Council Executive Vice Chair Adrian Arsht. I think some taller people came before me. I will be brief because I know that the real highlight is to hear our honoree perform. A couple of things specifically to mention about him that I think relate to what the Atlantic Council's award means. Winton really embodies humanitarianism. He received the Higher Ground Hurricane Relief Concert Award so soon after Hurricane Katrina, he and his musical pals went to New Orleans and gave a spectacular concert to raise money for the citizens of New Orleans. He goes around the world performing great music, but always reaching out to citizens in the places he visits. Rather than read all his awards and tell you where he went to school, which was Juilliard, let me tell you two stories. New Year's Day, 2009, a recording studio here in New York City. Sandra Day O'Connor and Wynton Marsalis sat down to have a conversation. It was a video that was to be shown the day before the inauguration of President Obama. And Wynton sat and talked to Sandra about jazz and why he believed that jazz was really like running a country. He talked about the fact that getting the three branches of government to work together was really like getting his musicians to perform together. And he felt that the struggle to get the creativity and the passion of his jazz musicians to perform jointly was very much like running the three branches of government. And I sat and listened to that and thought how special that was and that Sandra and I each always carried a copy of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, which was, had been a gift from my mother. And so after the taping, I gave Winton his own copy and he carries it to this day in his trumpet case. Winton taught me a little bit about conducting. A number of years ago in Miami, there was to be an opening of a hotel and they were honoring the Performing Arts Center, Arts Center there and Winton. And so together, we were to lead the moment when the champagne corks popped. So they had given me my own baton. And I thought this would be wonderful. Winton would take my hand, and together we would do this. My tradition is classical music. So for me, you begin a piece going gently up and then down. The downbeat starts the music. What I didn't know is in jazz, it's the other way and you come down gently, and you begin like that. So here, Winton and I were holding the baton, and I was struggling to go up, and he was trying to bring my arm down. So I suggest to you that we should think more in terms of jazz, which is upbeat. And now, on behalf <laughs> On behalf of the Atlantic Council, I am pleased to present Wynton Marsalis with the Global Citizen Award.
Thank you very much, Adrian. Thank you, distinguished guests. It's an honor to be here. I'm supposed to have some remarks here, but it's okay. They're not here. I'm a jazz musician. We're taught to improvise. It's interesting to have the distinguished prime ministers of Italy and Japan here tonight, um, two countries that are so dear to, to me and an important part of the history of our music. Uh, just to say that the spirit of Italy, of course, through fantastic opera, touched Louis Armstrong, who grew up listening to recordings of Caruso, the singing Pagliacci, and the feeling of tragedy and depth of soul that he heard in those recordings. Those early recordings were translated into his horn, traveled around the world being, of course, the greatest ambassador that the world has ever known. When it comes to Japan, as a nation that has given so much to us, jazz music, we wouldn't have survived the recording faux pas of the 80s and 90s were it not for the Japanese collectors who kept the art of discography alive for us. Many times I'm going to Japan, cats will say, man, go see if you can find X record, or can you find this, or see if you can find that. They kept it going for us. I'm just going to tell a couple of stories. One central point, the, the honor that I feel just to be uh, considered a global citizen. I grew up in Kenner, Louisiana, and it's, it's, a, it's a joke that I used to have with my friends. Man, I'm a citizen of the world, man. We're living on one block, segregated block, between Jefferson Highway and the Mississippi River. We had no concept of what the world was. To stand now after all this time and have the opportunity to be an enemy of segregation for so long and to have had the opportunity to be hosted by so many nations and have had the opportunity to work with great artists and musicians of all stripes all over the world, to have an opportunity to work with my fantastic young musicians who our trio, we call it Trio Democracy because we have Dan Nimmer from Milwaukee, Carlos Enriquez from the Bronx, and Ali Jackson from Detroit. Walter Blanding from Ohio. I always think many times that we talk about politics and finance, of course, finance and politics, finance and politics. But what happens when finance and politics lose their way? We have to go home. And home for us on Earth is cultural. Home is our identity. All human beings have some type of ethnic identity, some ethnic origin, some type of group, subgroup that they belong to. But we also belong to a much greater group, and that is our human heritage, and that is the heritage that is mined by the arts. So when someone says Italy, I think of Antonio Vivaldi. I think of Puccini. I think of Toscanini. I think of many great works of art. Michelangelo. Somebody talks about Japan. For me, they talk about the great swordsman, Miyamoto Musashi who left us with some advice. If you want to deal with big things, deal with them exactly like how you would deal with small things. Just think simpler. I go through my own history, and I'm just going to give you three examples of what I consider to be global citizenship opportunities that I've had to learn from being in the world and touching people who come from different places. The first was when I had the opportunity to go to Poland and other countries that were behind what we called the Iron Curtain at that time. Being a brother from Kenner, Louisiana, I thought everything I read was purely U.S. propaganda. I was like, oh, what's happening? Afro wearing, bell bottoms, deep down soul. This is all BS. You know they're always lying to us. When I went to Poland, I had the opportunity to meet younger musicians. After we played a concert at something called the Jazz Jamboree in 1981, some younger musicians came to me and they said, man, be glad you don't have to deal with what we're dealing with over here. This is something very different. And no matter what you're dealing with in the United States, this is a drag. <laughs> Look at what we're eating. I looked at what we're eating. I said, yeah, this here is a drag. <laughs> I'm used to eating gumbo and jambalaya. I don't know what this is. <laughs> a little later in my time out, I had the opportunity to meet musicians from different cultures and people from different cultures. I'll tell you a couple of stories. One from Italy. We were playing a jazz festival in Ravenna, Italy, and we heard a young boy play. He was 13 years old. 
We're sitting at the tables listening to the band playing. We were critiquing the musician. Yeah, not bad, you know, he can play. Somebody came over and said, that boy is 13 years old. We all jumped up from the tables and went over to see who, who was it that was 13 years old that could play our music with this degree of sophistication. A young kid from Sicily named Francesco Cafiso. I got his phone number, his parents. A couple of years later, I was going on tour and I called his parents to see if he wanted to come to a gig we were playing in Italy and just sit in on the gig. We were having trouble with English, so they thought I said, come on the tour. <laughs> so when I got off the phone, it wasn't straight. They called back and I said, well, I didn't mean the, 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 the gig, I meant the tour. And they said, no, no, the tour, the tour. So I said, you know, there's no more room on our bus. It's only us, a band of grown men, and you're gonna send your son out on the road with a bunch of people you don't know? They said, we will send him. Sure enough, we went to take off. Little did we know that half the cats in the band's kids were going to be on that tour. Man, you, we call that tour now the elementary school bus tour. <laughs> you ever try to have a group of, if you have a group of musicians who are grown with a bunch of kids for two or three weeks, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Phew, they gave us a thorough education. With us was our young man from Italy. Now he's 27 years old. He remains a genius of the alto saxophone. Story about being in Japan. Couples, a couple moved into our building on 66th Street in New York, and their son was a trumpet player. His name is Tepe Yoneda. His mother's name is Naoko, and his father's name is Atsushi. Our kids were around the same age at that time. We met Tepe, started coming to my house. He'd give him a few little trumpet lessons. We started to talk. Well, I love Japanese food. What I really love above all else is Japanese breakfast. But you know, you can't get Japanese breakfast anywhere. It's one place you can get Japanese breakfast on Central, Central Park South. I mean, I didn't want to go there. We developed a relationship, and the mother of the family would call me sometimes and say, Atsushi wants to know, do you want Japanese breakfast? So Atsushi wants to know, do I want Japanese breakfast? Yeah, I'll come down and eat some Japanese breakfast. Atsushi would come to my house and just, he would get him a beer and sit on the couch. He loved baseball. He would just look at baseball. He wasn't too much for talking. Never said a word. Hey man, you like the game? <laughs> we would go out in the park on Saturdays and Sundays and play football with our kids. He had been a football, American football player in Japan. They moved back to Japan when my kids were 12, 11, and, and Tepe was 12, 13. Tepe sat in my house for three days. He didn't say a word. He just sat there. As they were about to leave, I asked our sushi, I said, hey man, all those mornings that Noko was calling me, did you ever ask if I wanted Japanese breakfast? He said, what? <laughs> did you ever ask me to eat Japanese breakfast? He said, no, but I was glad you came. <laughs> leave you the story of the great African drummer, Yakub Adi, master of Ghanaian drum. He was teaching us some of his music and he said, brother, this is a royal rhythm. I listened to the rhythm. I said, it doesn't sound royal to me. He said, that is why you will never play it correctly. In order for us to further our agenda on earth, for us to come closer, it's, it's more than business. It's more than politics. It's deeper. We got to have touches. We have to touch people. They have to know us and they have to feel us. And when they feel us, they have to know that we're for real, that we're not playing. And we have to bring them close to us. And we have to endure some things we don't like. We have to deal with traditions and things that are foreign to us, and we have to study. And we have to want to know. And we have to want to get closer. And we have to want to bear with them. We have to want to speak the same language. All of that is in the arts. There's a long tradition that artists follow. We listen to arts of all types of people. I'll never forget. When I was 15 years old, I left my segregated environment and went to a camp in North Carolina, Eastern Music Festival. It was some dude that was gonna do a master class. He was just a little older than us. Some guy playing the cello whose name was your mama. I said, man, somebody named your mama play cello. What kind of stuff is this? That guy came. And when he started playing the cello, all of us who were 15, 16, and 14 were like, Damn, maybe we need to stop playing. 
He gave us three and a half to four hours of his time that afternoon. I never forgot that. It burned an indelible impression on my mind, the level of seriousness of this person. Now we all know him, legendary Yo-Yo Ma. Everybody celebrates him. I tell him every time I see him, hey man, you were so for real at that camp one day in North Carolina that you made a change in my life. That's what we do in the arts. We're gonna play a selection for y'all that is something about the echo, something about the way that ricochets happen on earth that we can't explain, we don't understand. We send an idea and a thought French Enlightenment and the Revolution, they're thinking about things. Here comes the American Revolution. Here comes the American Civil War. Here we are at the beginning of World War I. Here comes James Reese Europe's band of Afro-Americans attached to the 369th fighters from Harlem. The Hellcats from Harlem. They couldn't fight with the American army because we were segregated. They fought attached to the French army and they whipped a lot of booty. James Reese Europe's band left the spirit of ragtime, put a blessing on France that still remains. You can still meet people who say James Reese Europe was here. But here's the echo and the ricochet of James Reese Europe's syncopation, the freedom, the sound of the blues and jazz. Here's the echo of that, coming back to the United States of America before, right before World War II. This time, it's two Frenchmen Django Reinhardt on the guitar, Stefan Grappelli playing violin, sending our own thing back to us, the thing that started back then with the Enlightenment, that went through our revolution, went through our civil war. Here they come back at us, but what are they doing? They're swinging with the quintet of the hot clubs of France. We're gonna play now for you all a song that they play that is a perennial swinger. It's a great honor to address you. It's a great honor to be here. I'm going to say the words of my man Francesco Cafiso, what he would always say about, about Italy. He would say, Italy number one. Italy number one. Italy number one. And I would say, New Orleans number one. New Orleans number one. America number one. He said, no, no, no. Italy number one. I said, no, no. America number one. He said, no, no. Italy number one. He said, okay. Italy, America number one. That's what we need. This is minus one. Thank <laughs> you. 